Welcome to the outdoor worship space at St. Michael and All Angels Anglican Church. My name is Donna Wall and I serve as priest of this parish. We love this sacred space and give thanks for its beauty and for the place of rest and worship that it has been and continues to be. We give thanks too for the Coast Salish people and the Sartlip Nation whose territory this is and with whom we are in a journey of healing and reconciliation. In the Anglican tradition, we seek to follow Jesus and to shape our lives by the Word of God. Those faith stories help us to know that Jesus lovingly meets people where they are. Please know that wherever you are on your faith journey, you are so welcome in this space, and we're glad that you're here. In this time of global pandemic, we continue to be the church and worship in the places we find ourselves sheltering, praying, working, and living. With you, we pray for the health of the whole world and give thanks that God's loving presence is with us wherever we are. Sharing in the service today is church musician Tony Booker and members of our parish who share in leading the readings, the hymns, and the prayers. Special thanks to Barbara Logan, who faithfully records our musicians in a wide range of locations and circumstances, and to our editor and producer, Angela Goddard. We welcome today the Primate of the Anglican Church of Canada, Linda Nichols, who will share our homily. Today we celebrate All Saints and All Souls Day, and give thanks for those faithful people whose lives and witness reflect God's goodness. We will light candles in memory of those from our parish who have died this past year and give thanks for them. We give thanks for all the saints, formal and informal, who inspire, console, and encourage us in body, mind, and spirit. The love, the grief, the wonder of how it all mingles together help us to know that God is at work in us and in our world. With joy, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us listen for the word of God.
First reading, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. A reading from Revelation. I looked and saw that there was a great number that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are all before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more, and the sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Psalm 34. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall be in my mouth. I will glory the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me out of my terror. Look upon God and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angels of the Lord encompasses those who fear God and will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you are not you are God's saints, for those who fear God lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and none will be punished who trust in you. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and none will be punished who trust in you. The second reading is from 1 John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, 
for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of Christ. Greetings to the Anglican Church of Canada. Although we know that life can be full of surprises, we usually plan our lives in the expectation of stability. We set dates for a longed-for vacation trip. We plan a wedding. We look forward to going home for an anniversary or significant birthday. I know my own calendar was filled with expected events, travel, and celebrations for months in advance until COVID-19 locked us down. At first, my calendar was empty and a bit scary, and then began to have tentative dates or at least plans to prepare a videotaped message. Yet even now, seven months later, everything is put into the calendar with a question mark. Will it be in person or by Zoom or canceled? The stability and security of our daily lives is gone. We had hoped it would be resolved by Easter, then by the summer, then by Thanksgiving, and now Christmas looks doubtful. And we are tired of it all. The wearing masks everywhere you go, sanitizer in every pocket, purse, and in every location we visit or live, and no hugs or handshakes. There is no end in sight as the second wave rolls through our communities and research continues to seek a vaccine. We long for stability, even as we long to gather together again. In every in-person, socially distanced small group I have attended, people comment on how good it is to see real flesh and blood three-dimensional people, even if they are masked. Dr. Aisha Ahmed is a political science professor who has visited many disaster zones. She spoke on Twitter about her experience, saying, I always hit a wall six months into a tough assignment in a disaster zone. The desire to get away or make it stop is intense. I've done this many times, and at six months, it's like clockwork. She also knows it will last four to six weeks, struggling to feel creative or hopeful, and then will break through it. We are in that four to six week, six month wall. In this time, she counsels, be gentle with yourself. Go for a walk outdoors. Take care of essentials for you and your family, and do not expect too much of yourself or others. As people of faith, we do have one foundational certainty, a rock on which we can stand in the midst of the swirling uncertainties around us. That rock is Jesus Christ. The practice that helps us stay rooted on that rock is prayer. One of the joys of this pandemic time has been the use of the daily office, daily morning and evening or night prayers. Grounding our days in the rhythm of scripture and prayers helps us to remember who we are each day 
each night. It is a foundational part of being Anglican. It is expected of clergy and roots the life of religious communities and is offered to all Anglicans through our Book of Common Prayer, Book of Alternative Services, and online shared resources around the Anglican Communion. Many have delighted in morning or evening prayer with the Dean of Canterbury Cathedral in the garden or the piggery or around the cathedral or with the cat. Others have joined one of our bishops, including Bishop John Watton, Bishop Mary Irwin Gibson, Archbishop Ann Germond, Bishop Lynn McNaughton, Bishop David Lehman, or others online through live opportunities. So keep praying. The uncertainty of the months ahead is depressing. In-person worship has started for some, but is not the same as we observe all the careful and necessary rules to be socially distanced, masked, with no contact or singing or coffee hour. Yet, we are God's people. We continue to be the church called to love God with heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves to the best of our ability within the circumstances of our situations. I have been deeply encouraged by the faithfulness of so many during this time in preparing online worship daily and weekly, in reaching out to those in need, continuing lunch and meal programs to feed the hungry, caring for friends and neighbors through phone calls, prayer shawls, meals and reminders that they are not alone or in advocating for those forgotten in our social chaos. We are approaching All Saints Day when we remember those who have gone before and have lived their faith as a visible witness in their time. Many lived through even more challenging circumstances, wars, plagues, natural disasters, political oppression, religious persecution, economic collapse, and pandemics. And they have shown us a way. In living memory, we know people who were faithful through World War I, the Spanish flu, the Great Depression, World War II, and other regional conflicts and disasters. Our grandparents and parents and great-grandparents were called to faithful perseverance, as are we. They continued to build and sustain church communities, love God and their neighbor, and we are here because of their witness. I am confident Anglicans across Canada will do no less. So, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us facing the challenge of our time in COVID-19. And as citizens with the saints and members of the household of God be built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. That is so uh, beautiful. May you, our sister, become thousands of... May God bless you until we meet again. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the triumph of Christ in the lives of all your saints. Receive all we offer you, our mind, body, soul, and strength, and help us, like them, to run our course with faith, that we may come to your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ, our rock and our salvation. Amen.
In the presence of God, we remember this day the unseen cloud of witnesses who are a compass for us on our faith journeys. We remember those who lived and loved deeply, who found inner strength in their companionship with God. We remember those who were filled with the light of Christ and who inspired us by their teaching and sharing of their beliefs. We remember those who were risk takers, who faced fears with action and sought justice even when it was difficult and there were personal consequences. We remember those who were filled with faith and by their example brought us into deeper relationship with God. We remember those who were brave, who navigated their struggles with hope and courage and taught us by their example how to live with faith during struggle and difficulty. We remember those who were challenging to love and pray that all the broken places in them and in us might find healing and wholeness in the love of God. We remember those who loved life, whose humor and enthusiasm lifted our spirits and brought us joy. We remember those who were nurturers, who listened with great compassion and sustained us by their caring natures and helped us to know the fullness of God's comfort and understanding and who by their very nature called out our best selves. We remember those whom we have loved and who have gone to be with God and whose names are written forever on our hearts. On this All Saints Day, we light candles in loving remembrance of members of our church family who have gone home to God this past year. We remember the light of Christ that each of these people shared. We recall how each one reflected the glory of God and we recount their loving deeds and rejoice in their faithfulness and their reunion with all the saints of God in heaven. After the candles are lit, you will hear the church bell tolled for each one and for all those we hold in our hearts. As the sound of the bell lingers, we remember the ways these precious lives have resonated in our lives and how we continue to experience their influence and love even when we can see them no longer. We light a candle in loving remembrance of Ian May. We light a candle in loving remembrance of Anne Snellgrove. We light a candle in loving remembrance of Paul Dorbin. We light a candle in loving remembrance of Ben Lowry. We light a candle in loving memory of Donna Sandovic. We light a candle in loving memory of Audrey Darby. And we light a candle in loving remembrance of all the saints who have gone before us, members of our families, our community, and our world. We light a candle for those who have died of COVID-19, and we pray for the health of the whole world. In joyful expectation of the resurrection to eternal life, we remember this day those who have gone before us in faith and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in union with all your saints and bring us with them to the joyous feast of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. To the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, please respond saying, hear our prayer. Holy and gracious God, 
we give thanks for the unending gifts of your love and mercy and for those people in our lives and in our world who have helped us to know and share in those gifts. We give thanks for those saints who have accompanied us in the dark and difficult parts of our journeys and those who give us, by their example, courage and hope. We give thanks for those saints who share in our joy and who, by their presence, help multiply your goodness. We give thanks for those whose spirits and gifts enrich our world, and we proclaim the saints of our own generations. These great women and men of God help strengthen and renew our faith and our inspiration. God has sent them to us in times of loss and confusion, and they have blessed us. They have led us. They have loved us. We give thanks and once again entrust them to your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of forgiveness and restoration, we know that the saints were not those who were perfect. They struggled and often failed and yet managed to raise up our faith in God and in one another. We pray for your local, national, and world leaders and for our church leaders that in their struggles and failures, they may find ways to respond with grace, insight, and wisdom. May they help lead your people to the light of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of companionship, draw near to those who are in need this day. Those we hold in our hearts, those known to you alone, and those for whom we have been asked to pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and mighty God, we rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints. We commend our friends and loved ones who have departed from us, those who have brought us into the world, those who have taught us, those who have taught us your holy word and given us holy sacraments. We remember those who have nurtured us and allowed us to see the light of Christ in our own soul and in the work you have given us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of unfailing light, we thank you for the lives of the saints and ask for grace to follow their example. Help us to be open like Mary, the mother of Jesus, bold like the Apostle Paul, joyful like Miriam, steadfast like Moses. Help us to reflect Mary Magdalene's great love for you and Peter's great devotion. And when we have failed you, help us to remember that all your saints were sinners in need of mercy, who found salvation, healing, and hope through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be one on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
this All Saints Day, we give thanks for the faithful life and witness of Audrey Price, and we dedicate these brass vases in her honor and her memory. She was a quiet, faithful server and member of the Altar Guild, and we remember her lovingly. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for Audrey's life and for her witness and for these vases, which will display the beauty of your creation and serve as reminders of all the wonders of creation. Bless them, bless us, as we seek to serve you faithfully. We ask all these things in Christ's name, amen. May God keep you in the company of the saints Christ protect you with the ministry of the angels and the spirit make you holy in God's service and the blessing of the God who has created you, the Christ who has befriended you and the spirit who has gifted you be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.